and nudging me and pushing me forward for the last year especially has been the message of the kingdom the message of the kingdom Jesus came to preach and declare the message the gospel of the kingdom can you say the gospel of the kingdom there's a lot of gospels out there there's several gospels in the in the scripture it talks about the gospel of Christ and and uh, different things but but there was no singular message on the lips of Christ more than the gospel of the kingdom and why would that be because there's probably nothing more important than the gospel of the kingdom when John the Baptist showed up he said the kingdom of God is at hand what does that mean it's proximal it's close and then when Christ showed up he said the gospel of the kingdom must be preached and all through the parables Christ would pre say a prepositional statement he said the kingdom of God is like this he didn't say the kingdom is this he said it's like this and so we need to understand that the language of the scriptures and the language of the spirit is not like typical normal language this is why Christ said numerous times he who has an ear to hear let him hear everybody that was listening had these some had some really big ones <laughs> big old stops and some had little tiny ones but they all had them right. he wasn't talking about those he was talking about the inner ear of the spirit man he who has ears to hear let him hear and so the language of the spirit is not simple natural language you cannot read the bible like a piece of literature and really draw out of it that which Yahweh intended for you to get all right it's not literature Amen? If the Holy Spirit inspired the Word of God, it takes the Holy Spirit to understand it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so the language of the Spirit is metaphor, type and shadow, allegory. All right, what is that? What do all those things do? They draw a picture for us. So the language of the Spirit is largely imagery. So when, when, the Lord, when, when Christ would speak and he would give a parable, he'd say, the kingdom of God is like this. And he would then give a story. And some people would be like, huh. <laughs> Others would be like, huh? And say, okay, so somebody got that. And somebody, all right, so forget it. All right, the kingdom of God is like this. And then he would give another parable. All right, one, two, got it, okay. Somebody did, and said, all right, then, all right, the kingdom of God is like that. And then you give another parable to draw an image of what the kingdom of God is like. And so there's a principle that I like to use. I like to put stuff in terminology so that I can, I'm kind of simple. So sometimes it helps me. And so I will term it, the kingdom is like principle. The kingdom is like principle. Remember that. And so when you read a parable, and a parable is a natural story with a spiritual application. And it says the kingdom of God is like. What he's doing is he's trying to draw an aspect of the kingdom so that you understand how the kingdom operates. Now, lest you think that that is a new thing, this whole thing about the kingdom, I want to tell you that it is not. It is the very first thing. The commission Yahweh gave Adam in Eden has never been out of date. The Edenic commission is just as valid today as it was that day. Now we know that the Edenic commission got messed up when Adam and Eve ate themselves out of house and home. Right? And so... The Edenic mission and commission got messed up, but that did not deter the father. Mm -hmm.